Hello there and welcome to another instructional video brought to you by Zappysys. In this video you'll see how easy it is to use a custom Zappysys component in SSIS that can retrieve source data in JSON format and insert it into some target destination. You can use this component if you're getting data from an API, you can use it if you have a local file saved somewhere with JSON data, or you can use it if you simply want to just copy paste JSON data directly into the component. It doesn't matter. And as always, this is a custom component you'll be able to use once you download and install the Zappysys SSIS Power Pack, which you can get from the downloads page at zappysys.com. And I'll be sure to add a link for that in the description below. All right, let's get to it. So I'm going to open up Visual Studio, and I have this package here with three different Dataflow components already in it. And uh, one is going to be for an example with an API call, one with a local file, and one with an array within an array. So we'll look at that one in a minute. First, we'll start with this API example. So I'm going to drag this JSON source component. And you'll notice all of these custom components with the Zappysys ZS prefix that you'll get with the Zappysys SSIS power pack. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up this component and you're going to see a lot of configuration. So I'm not going to go over everything, but the one thing that I do want to point out is this is a completely custom component. Sometimes Zappysys components will enhance certain features that are already available within SSIS. This does not exist, so this is something completely new. And whenever you're calling any type of API, there's definitely going to be some information that you're going to need to know. So the first thing is, if you're using an API with a URL, you're going to need to know that URL. So you could type it in this box. These are some examples that are prepackaged with the Power Pack. So I'm just going to use this example for that already uses a URL. But again, you will need to know your own URL. And whenever you're using an API, you need to know if you need to embed credentials at all, or maybe sometimes you use them in the URL itself. So if any of this sounds confusing or you're not sure what to do, definitely check your API documentation for wherever you're trying to retrieve this data from. All of it should be available in that documentation. But you could use this use credentials feature, um, and this component supports basic HTTP connection and OAuth, and there's even an example or a connecting point for Salesforce connections, which is a little bit different. But suppose you're using a basic HTTP connection it says, okay, this is optional. Do you want to configure it? Sure. So now it gives you these other options. Uh, you need to give it the URL, what type of credentials, basic, user ID. So again, these are just configurable options if you need to use HTTP user credentials. You could also use the OAuth feature. So let's say we want to set up an OAuth configuration. So come in here, pick your application that you want to use. You know, you'll notice all the different boxes, your ID and secret. Again, if you're using OAuth credentials, you'll know what these uh, attributes or values should be. I just wanted you to know that they're there in case you use OAuth. So along with the URL and the credentials, you'll also want to know what method you're using so I'm going to turn those credentials off. Most of the time you're going to use the get method. Sometimes you'll use the post method. And when you do that, you'll notice this option opened for uh, information in the body. So you can either click this pencil and you could type it in here. Or you could type directly in this box. And if you have other headers, so maybe if you have an API key and you want to put it in this header, but it's not directly in the URL, you can use that feature. So again, it's very customizable, and it's going to be very dependent upon your own personal API documentation. So I can't stress that enough. Definitely refer to your own API documentation. Another thing you might be interested in is the pagination. So most APIs are going to limit how much data you can retrieve with each call, and you need to configure some pagination to say, 
retrieve 20 number retrieve 20 records and do it until I retrieve all of the records or 100 records you can use this tab and again check your documentation for how to use pagination for the API that you're calling one more thing since I did breeze over this URL because again I'm using an example URL that's already built into the power pack if you are building your own URL or you're writing it in there you could also use a variable so maybe um, you know you have some date related variable that is built into your URL you could include that in your variable too or you can include a variable in your URL that you're calling to. So just wanted to point that out. Okay, so I know this is, so I know there are a lot of options, a lot of tabs here. Again, you'll know what to do with all of these if you refer to your API documentation. But all I did was select that prepackaged example. And if we want to preview the data that's going to be retrieved, I'm just going to click this preview button. And here is the data that will be retrieved from this URL that's in JSON format. Okay, I'm just gonna click close and I'm gonna say, okay. It's gonna pop up and say, hey, I scanned the data that we're retrieving from this URL. It may be different in the future, but I'm gonna build the metadata limits, how big are strings based on the data that we've retrieved this time. But I'm gonna guess that sometimes it could be bigger. So I'm gonna make the metadata limits four times bigger than what we retrieved. Okay, great, that's helpful. You know, that's definitely something to be aware of. So, so now I want to put this data into a target somewhere. So I'm going to drag this custom Zappysys upsert destination. And I'm just going to connect this JSON data to this target. And we're going to configure this target. So I'm going to upsert. We're going to insert all new records or update any existing ones. Well, there's not going to be any existing ones because I'm going to make a new table. And I'm going to call this json api so we're going to say okay it says he's mapped all of the columns from the source to the target i'm going to point out that these are going to be my keys from the json data and i'm going to say okay it says hey you don't have any index for this table do you want to make one i'm going to say no this time so now i'm going to hop over to SQL Server, and now I have a blank table that has no rows in it because we just created it. So in Visual Studio, I'm going to run this little package that we made. It's going to go get data from that URL in JSON format and take those 500 rows and put it into our database. So let's go check it. And there we have it, 500 rows, just like that. Super easy. You'll notice I have these other examples. So let's use those. And those, the table doesn't even exist yet. We haven't made it. Those are for our future examples. So let's hop back over to Visual Studio. Let's disable the API example. And let's use this file example. So I'm going to drag the JSON source again. And in this instance, I have a file saved on my machine that's in JSON format. So I'm just going to select that. So notice lots of options went away because I'm no longer using an API to retrieve the information. I'm just going to hit preview. And oh, wow, there's not that much data. What's that about? That's because in the JSON file, we need to use the select filter feature to say what data do we want. I don't want the main overall header data. I want the actual data that shows the shipping address, the city, the region, the postcode. So I'm going to select that array and say OK. Now when I hit preview, I have the data that I want. So before I didn't show you this columns tab, we can talk about that. This was the tab that got automatically populated when it said, hey, I'm going to make the metadata four times bigger than what appeared in the API call. So this is based on the sizes of the file. So let's say I know sometimes the city has a length of 100 characters. So I can change that. And then 
there's this lock feature over here. I'm gonna check that box. And that way, whenever new data is retrieved in this JSON file, it knows that 100 should be the length for this city field. And now let's drag our upsert destination. And this one's gonna go in our test database as well. And we're gonna make a new table and I called it JSON underscore file. So it mapped all the columns that it found. That's a key, that's a key, and the shipping name is the key. So we're gonna say, okay. It says, hey, do you wanna make an index to make it faster? We'll say no, and we'll just run this package. So it retrieved 500 rows from the local JSON file and put it in this new table called JSON file. Super easy. Let's hop back over to Visual Studio for one more example. And that's this last one I called JSON array. So again, I told you, you could just copy and paste JSON data directly into this component. So we're gonna open up the component. And that's what example number one is. You'll notice some commented section there, but here is a sample set of JSON data. And we want the books. There's an author, Bob, title, hello one, but this book has multiple sections within it. And that's what I wanted to show you. What if you have an array within an array. So right now, if we say select filter within this store data set, if I just wanted the books, there are only three books. That last one is a location. So I have three rows, but we notice this book has three sections, this book has three sections, this book has three sections. Suppose you wanted a row for every section of every book. Then we need to select this array. And now when we select preview, now we have our nine rows. We have our book listed three times for all three sections. Before, I might have gone a little quickly, if you just selected the books, it will, it will retrieve the data of the sections, but it will just stuff them as a list within one column. So maybe you want that, but sometimes you might want one row for every one of the sections of every one of the books. So I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna say okay. And now it did the original option. Hey, we're gonna guess and make the metadata four times bigger than what it appears here. So let's do the upsert destination. We'll drag this JSON data. We'll put it in our database. We have our new file or our new table that I call JSON array. It mapped the columns for us. I'll specify the keys. Do you want to make an index? This time I'll say sure, make it faster. So we'll run and now we'll run the package and create the data. Nine rows. Into our database. And that's it. I mean, it's super easy and customizable when it comes to using this custom Zappysys JSON source component. I hope you see that. And if you want to give it a try but haven't already downloaded the SSIS Power Pack, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget the link is in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to the Zappysys YouTube channel for more updates and SSIS tips and tricks in the future.